Coming up, I'm gonna share how to properly name your app for growth. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young. Happy New Year. It is 2018. I'm going to focus more on the YouTube channel. I focused on it in 2017. It's grown phenomenally well. Got over, I think, close to 2,000 subscribers at this moment. So if you haven't hit subscribe, please do so. It's been something I love doing. I loved creating these videos rather than writing blog, cat, blog posts because it's just more fun and more engaging. And I, I just love doing it. So I hope you stay around. In 2018, we're gonna continue publishing a lot more video content. So stay tuned for that. But today, I wanna talk about how to properly name your app for growth. A lot of times when you think about ASO, you think about, okay, keywords and what keywords should I have? But I think too many times we forget about actually looking at how to name your app. Now that we have the concept and what we want our app to be, rather than just coming up with some random name, using data to dictate what that name should be. I wanna walk you through an example that is one of my apps that I just recently launched, and I'm gonna be doing a case study on this app, walking you week by week how I'm optimizing it in the App Masters Academy. So if you wanna check that out, it is appmastersacademy.com. But for this video, I wanna show you how I came up with a name for this app and how I use data to actually name it the way I did. All right, so let's get into it. All right, guys, so one app that I want to show you is an app that we got, we work closely with called Sentence Master. Great app, and Joel and his team, I don't think he would mind me sharing this, but I wanna share this as an example. So before we worked together, the, the app was called, as you can see, within App Annie, so it's all public records, but it's called Sentence Master English Sentence Builder and Maker. Now, obviously, back at the time, you can have all these 50 characters, and that's how you can leverage that. So they were really leveraging that. And Sentence Master was something that Joel and them came up and said, look, hey, we want to really call it Sentence Master because we love that app. Now, we did a couple of different things. If you've been following the videos, I showed you that I changed the icon, and that increased conversions on Google Play. We did an A-B test on Google Play, you know, real data, and that this new icon that you're seeing on App Annie increase conversions, downloads by 50%, just that new icon. So it does make a huge difference, okay? The second one is, look how I named the app. So I found doing our research that Sentence Builder actually had really good search volume. Not really good, but really decent, right? And low competition. I said, look guys, Sentence Master is great and trying to really focus on learn English or English itself, it's harder to focus on that particular keyword. So it's gonna be really difficult because of the data, right? So now we renamed it Sentence Builder Master and look at what happened, right? We weren't ranking at all for Sentence Builder, which had decent traffic, right? And suddenly because of the name change from there's a really long Sentence Master blah, blah, blah to Sentence Builder Master, we got to really increase the ranks and downloads. I think we did a 50% increase in downloads on iOS. On Google Play, we did 50% just with that app icon change and on iOS, we did a 50% increase in downloads just by changing that app name from Sentence Builder, or I'm sorry, Sentence Master, dash blah, blah, learn English and all this other stuff to Sentence Builder Master. So really using data to determine what your app should be called. So the next thing I wanna show you is this is my app. This is a new sleeping app that I just bought. Here, I'm gonna show you a little quick little link for it. It's called Midnight Owl Sleep Sounds. And then you see the, the graphics that we have. I'm really digging this, these type of screenshots. I think it's really engaging. And then having different screenshots here, okay? I'm really digging this. So the app's doing well. I haven't looked at the data, but I wanna, and that's not important for this particular video, and I'll share this. Again, I'm gonna show the backstory of all this in the App Masters Academy, but for here, I really wanna show you how I've determined how to name this app. Now, what I decided to call it Midnight Owl, again, I didn't know what to call it. I had the app, I bought the app actually through Fliptopia, so I bought the app through Fliptopia and I wanted to optimize it and see what I can do, what I, how I can go crazy with ASO. So I just pulled in a bunch of different keywords. Again, if you've been following along, this is the spreadsheet that we put together for our clients. And I'm willing to share all this with you because it's my app, but you can see all the keywords and stuff. But essentially what I'm trying to do is just pull the data, right? And what I saw 
was, hey, Night Owl had really good traffic, right? You can see 4.1, 46, I'm ranked number two for Night Owl X, right? And so now you can see why I put, I wanted Owl in there and I wanted Midnight. So I thought Night, and then you can see the Spanish Mexico localization in here as well. And then also Hibernate. So maybe if there was good traffic for this, if Hibernate was a little bit more, I might have called it Hibernate Owl, right? Because there's really good traffic. But unfortunately, Hibernate, although we're ranking number five for this keyword, we don't rank, there's not enough traffic volume for this, right? And then Foobar, don't know really why, but we're number 10 and so forth. So again, really utilizing the, the data and the search volume to determine what your actual app name should be called. Now, obviously we would love to be sleep sounds. Like I would love to rank really well, really well for that. But unfortunately I don't. So typically what I do in that first round is I just focus on, all right, I'm gonna be a little bit more aggressive. So I do wanna see where I come in for sleep sounds. Right here, if you look at this here, let me sort this by traffic. So you can see sleep sounds, really high traffic, right? So I said, all right, it's worth it for me to go after this keyword in the app name for the time being, because I wanna see where I end up. Obviously I'm not doing literally squat. So I'm gonna rename my app. This is the second iteration. This is version two iteration ASO that you're seeing here. Rename my app, Midnight Owl, and then Thunderstorm, because I really wanna get aggressive with Thunderstorm. Because if you look over here at the bottom, let me see, Thunder. Storm sounds, you see I'm 41 for this keyword and it, it was only in the subtitle. Here's my subtitle, sleep sounds with thunderstorm, right? So I was trying to duplicate sleep sounds, didn't work. So I'm gonna scrap sleep sounds entirely, entirely and then go aggressively for thunderstorms. So you can see my Spanish Mexico app name has thunderstorm sounds in it and then sleep sounds with thunderstorm. I might put thunderstorm sounds in this one too. I probably will, but I wanted to go after sleep sounds as well. So I'll probably put thunderstorm sounds in the actual subtitle here too. So I'm gonna duplicate thunderstorm and then go after aggressively thunderstorm sounds. Right? And that's how you name your app. Like you look at the data, be aggressive in the beginning. That's how I always am. And then go after, make modifications optimizing based off the data and where you end up coming in. So that's the best way to do it. And that's how you should determine rather than coming up with some stupid, <laughs> stupid, some stupid app name that I could have came up with this for this, for this app. I just said, Hey, I'm going to call it based the, I'm going to name the app based on the traffic that I see right now. So far it's doing pretty well. All right, guys, that's it. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any topics that you want me to cover on this amazing YouTube channel, please let me know. It is easy, steve at appmasters.co, steve at appmasters.co. Just email me there and let me know what you wanna see or just leave it in the comments below what kind of topics that you wanna see and I'll monitor that as well. And if you haven't already hit subscribe, make sure you do so because you're gonna get a lot more information from me. This is the one channel that I want to continue producing content for along with the podcast because I love doing it. It's a lot easier to talk and show you guys different things and write out a freaking blog post for it. So hit that subscribe button. And lastly, if you're in California or anywhere in the world, I've got a friend coming from Germany, so there's no excuse, but it, we are doing an event in LA, in Santa Monica. I freaking love Santa Monica, beautiful Santa Monica. It is at mastersconnect.com. We're gonna have, we're limited to just 30 attendees. 30 attendees, and it's really meant for you to connect with some high level app entrepreneurs. We're gonna have some amazing speakers. David, who created Color Switch. We have somebody from Heal. We're gonna have Heidi Yu from Boost Insider, who is phenomenal when you're working with YouTube influencers. So you're gonna learn all about you working with YouTube influencers from her. And it's a really good event. I've heard so many great things from people who attend and from people who speak because you're willing to, one thing is, it opens your eyes to what successful app entrepreneurs are doing. What kind of apps are they creating? How are they driving growth? You're really gonna be able to connect one-on-one -on -one with really successful app entrepreneurs. These are app entrepreneurs running six and seven figure types of businesses. So it's like a little mini retreat, really meant the mission is for you to connect with some amazing app entrepreneurs. I hope to see you there. It is, once again, appmastersconnect.com happening February 21st and 22nd. Go check it out. 
The tickets are very, very affordable. I'm not looking to make a huge lot of money out of this. I essentially just want to break even, make a little bit of money out of this. But what my mission for this event has always been is to connect some really amazing people together because that's how I've been able to grow my business. And I just fully, fully believe in connections wholeheartedly. All right. Once again, at mastersconnect.com. See you on the next video. Bye.